Um, well, thanks. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Massively appreciate it. I know you're crazy busy at this time. How's your day going? Oh, it's great. Just got some, got some coffee and just ready to go. Yeah. All right. That's good enough. Yeah. Well, I've got a bigger question then, something to really test the brain power. Yeah. Pandemic. How have you been coping over the last 18 months or so on a personal level? Um, it's, it's been good, you know. Well, yeah. you know, just getting a lot of stuff done around the house that I'd never get done. Um, you know, cleaning. Never really home for that long to do that. But uh, yeah. Oh, so you think you it, could, you could, it, could, it could be worse. And yeah, that's, that's positive news enough, considering the situation. Anything that's just OK, it went, went OK for you is, is good to hear. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, you know, knock on wood. But of course, we're not so out of the air. We're not out of the woods as it is. Not, yet. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> How about Whitechapel then? The forced, obviously, the forced time off. Was it inevitably a good thing beside the creation of the record, of course? Uh, I think so as far as, um, you know, creatively been able to, you know, have that time to just completely focus on the album. Um, you know, we just, we were just, re we recorded for like four and we're in the studio for like four or five months. So we were just able to like pack, pack the album just with a bunch of stuff, you know, where, you know, as before we would have had a, a month off here, a month off there, like while we were recording. So, yeah, this just gave us time to, just time to, you know, focus 100% on the album, which we've sure. never had before. And, you know, we've yeah. released seven albums prior, so we're kind of like in that mode, that, you know, writing machine mode. So, you know, just kind of having all that time off kind of put it in hyperspeed, really. Yeah, I mean, of course, there's no doubt that it's surely the longest period of no live shows in Whitechapel's history. Of course, it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That is insane. Talking of which, Ken, of course, it's the brand new album, 29th of October via Metal Blade Records, a literal product of the COVID times. Considering how soon The Valley had been released, and of course, no doubt you wouldn't have been sure how long the closure of the world would actually go on for, was it an instant decision to start work on new music when everything just got cancelled? Yeah. Um, yeah, because we were going to, we we're already going to record like a new album. So it was kind of like, um, you know, we started writing, you know, a few months before we were actually going to write because um, mm. of the pandemic. So it started, you know, earlier than we, uh, were expected but yeah um since we had no tours booked or anything it just gave us time to to do what we do and um it didn't really affect us like as far as like you know because we all social distance and we were all like kind of in a bubble mm. with just our family and us so we you know we just wrote how we normally write just in the same room together so it wasn't a massive adjustment then no Okay, that's, that's a positive thing. Was there a lot of struggles to begin with when it came to writing, especially as mentally? I'd imagine the value was feeling still quite fresh to you. Uh, yeah, but like the fact that we had, you know, the valley to go off of, like we, we just wanted to make it, it was like a, a continuation. Mm -hmm. So when we wrote the valley, we didn't have, Phil didn't have the story in mind. We just wrote the music first, like we always do. Mm -hmm. And then Phil comes later with the story. So with this album, we knew it was going to be a continuation of this story. So it kind of gave us more uh, concepts and, you know, musical motifs to work with. Uh, you know, we could get more dramatic with it. Uh, just make it more, um, just give it some heft, you know. Did that, did that kind of process make it a bit more imaginative then? And did you find that everyone was throwing out constantly unique ideas and it felt almost like a different kind of style of writing? Yeah, we just, um, yeah, we just have like all these, you know, musical ideas on a, a whiteboard and we just try to, you know, we work on the songs that kind of seem like they can get finished because they could, you could tell there's a song in there. <laughs> So you work on those first and then, you know, after you get a few done, 
it starts to kind of come together like, oh, this album's missing some some more heavy groovy songs. So we start working on the ideas that are more based on that sort of feeling. Mm. And then it's like, oh, this this album needs a, uh, you know, kind of a, you know, sort of like a, a, just a big, you know, kind of like a ballad. So it's like breather or just kind of a finale. So, you know, we kind of work on that. So like after, you know, the first song gets done, it's a, the chips start to kind of fall as far as that goes. I mean, it doesn't get easier by any means, <laughs> but, but that's kind of how we work. You do make it sound very relaxed and very straightforward, particularly eight albums in. It's kind of like, oh no, this is how Whitechapel do things and we just do it this way. And it's, it rolls off the tongue, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it got harder with this album because it's like each song has its own, like each song is like its own genre, sort of. So it's like you kind of have to work to the strengths of the genre we're in, you know, for the particular song. Like you can't just have like a shredding death metal solo in the middle of like a, you know, dark rock song. Uh, so you, you know, <laughs> so we just kind of, you know, you just kind of got to work it. You're Whitechapel, you're eight albums in. I think you're allowed to do a death metal shredding solo in the middle of anything if you want. Yeah, we could, yeah. Yeah, we, we could. <laughs> so that, like, having that length of time to really work in it and perfect it, is that something that you've kind of thought or talked about as a group and gone, you know what, that worked quite nicely. Perhaps going forward, we might try to stick with that rather than, I guess, adding uh, or forcing time limits on yourself. With, uh, with what? Just like the... Yeah, the, the force time off, really. So you had, like you uh, said, four to five months of yeah. working on it, whereas you previously would never have had that block in one go. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to work like that in the future. Uh, mm. But, you know, we still got to, you know, we got to go out on the, on the road, <laughs> put it out. That's it, the forgotten yeah. thing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, we're, already, we're working on, you know, always writing. I got some material for the next record too, so. It's always a bit unusual to start talking to an artist because ultimately the writing process is done for you. The album's there, but it's still over a month away from release. So it's yeah. still gonna be very fresh, yet you naturally want to move on, so to speak, musically. Yeah, I mean, the last note of the album was recorded in mid-January. So we've just been, you know, then we had to do mixing and mastering and, and the artwork. So it's, and then, you know, waiting for uh, pressing plants to be ready. So that's what's taken so long, mm. but um, it's Would cool you... though. It's a, we've, we've been enjoying listening to the album ourselves. So we yeah. just can't wait for people to hear it. Oh, you do enjoy listening to it yourself. Yeah. Overall, you know, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Of it yet. no, no. It's cause like everyone's involved. So it's like, it kind of becomes greater than, you know, our, our individual selves could come up with. So it's like, you write something and you wrote it, but it's like, there's other people's stamps all over it. So it's like, it feels sort of alien kind of in a way. So it feels different. Oh, very good, very good. Yeah. That perfection then, having the amount of time to basically make Ken, I guess the best it could ever possibly be. Is that something that you think, you know, that was a really positive experience or did you find yourselves fiddling around a bit too much maybe you know oh this song was done but we kept messing around because we had the time and was it easy for you guys to cut it off and say nope that's done we're good yeah i know i loved it i loved how we did it um you know we'll just fidget around with songs until you know the you know the waking hour but uh but uh you know everyone you know it helps having like a group you know mindset so like we could all agree on something because it's harder when it's just like yourself and you're just like oh is this done or not because you'll just be fidgeting around forever mm. you know but what you have other people involved to you know kind of help is there one you know, is there one member that's just like yeah that's the person who tells you when it's done <laughs> no it's not just one member it's you know everybody kind of oh that's cool. It's even eight albums in the fact that you can still get to that point where you love to fiddle around is it's refreshing almost to hear. Yeah. Yeah. This is a Whitechapel album. That much should be made clear from the go. However, I mean, there is a 
some experimentation rather than things that will certainly please a hardcore fan base, people that have been following your career since day one, effectively, all the way up to now. Mm -hmm. Would you say it's a natural progression of Whitechapel? Yeah, um, I think it's a natural progression from, you know, the era, you know, the self-titled from 2012 on to here. Um, you could kind of run a line through it. You know, we are kind of experimenting with more like angular sounds and more like, uh, I don't know, just different, different things like slower tempos and, mm. you know, more melody. So it's just kind of like a natural progression from that um, from onward. What um, do you think? So, Sorry, go on. Oh, uh, so yeah. So we, you know, it's experimented with like slower tempos, like heavy tempos, but then that leads into, you could get add like cooler melodies when you slow it down a little bit, like kind of melodies that sink in. And so we just kind of experimented with that more on a Mark of the Blade. Mm. And Phil started singing. And then, you know, once you get confident at that, you know, we, we moved into the valley, which uh, which worked out really well with Phil's story, like wrapped around the, the music. And now with this one, we kind of, it seemed like we had a, more, we knew what we were wanted to do. Hmm. Um, so we just had to get there just by, you know, showing up every day and, and writing. Well, you certainly got there, that's for sure. I mean, I've, I've had a cursory list of it. It's too early for to be putting up the reviews yet, of course. And that's mm -hmm. why I had to start it with the whole, it's a what, definitely a White Chapel album, regardless of any yeah. experimentation. Yeah. We just want the, uh, you know, the songs to lift the story, mm. make it, you know, seem like a, kind of like a movie experience, you know, because the record uh the album ken it's it's a linear storyline so we wrote the music first and then we laid out the songs how we'd want to hear it like sequenced mm -hmm. musically and then phil wrote the story from beginning to end incredible that way um so when you you know track one is you know i will find you it's kind of like has that acoustic welcoming sound to it kind of like you're just turned on a movie or you just opened a book and, you know, and it just takes you on the, you know, the, the ride all the way until the end, the, fu the finale, um, you know, with, without us and mm. Ken. So. Uh, it's great. It's spectacular. Yeah. It's how you, you know, you want to kind of lose yourself in a music, a music and a storytelling yeah. like that. It should, I think it's, it's important to note though, that like, although this is similar in regards to the dark kind of sound and things to the valley this isn't the valley part two you 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 did you, you purposely chose kin as a title although it's almost i guess like a sister to the valley yeah i'd say it's you know opposite it's like the other other world you know the other reality um because the valley was true events yeah a true story you know the natural world tangible you know the tangible horrors of phil's childhood and then this one is like inward inside the what um, if inside the head yeah the what if and the um you know like like if if you know if, if you manifested two selves you know one your real self and then like a evil self like what would you know mm. what would happen like what choices would you make what you know would you listen to them would you feed the wolf you know? <laughs> it is infinitely fascinating it really is a subject matter that's well worth um, checking out as well like the thing not just musically or the story there's a lot that pops even before you put the record in the album art is truly incredible and the creation process of it that i read is even more impressive you you have to be so pleased and proud of that creation very much so yeah we just had to come up with a just a look you know mm -hmm. just a visual look itself just to make the, the characters on the cover look um just look um, ominous and we're just like indistinct like you don't not sure what it is but it's supposed to you know represent to like a to spirit selves like celestial spirit selves you know you it's just no really like discernibles like personalities or anything but just you know it could be anybody um mm. but you know merging together um you know um you know, but they're they kind of like have like a look about them, like they're just like trying to figure each other out, or, you know.
there is a sinister edge to it. I can't, when I yeah. saw it, I conjured up this image of old school walking down a record store, you know, um, aisle with the records all there. And it's, mm -hmm. I can, like the, the stop, you think you saw it, you look again, double take kind of, oh, and it stands out like on that shelf. Oh, great. That's, that's all. Yeah. That's what, what I like to hear. Yeah. Cause I, you know, I love going to record stores and just like looking at the, the artworks and just seeing, oh man, cause it's, you know, so big mm. and it's, it's cool. Cause it's, you know, the whole package, you got visuals and then you got the sound and, you know. Absolutely. Um, you worked with Mark Lewis on production, Fifth Straight Records. What is it about your relationship with uh, Mark Lewis that works so well? Well, he's really honest with us. Um, he'll tell us, you know, if, you know, something doesn't sound good, he's not afraid to, you know, give us, you know, hard criticisms. Um, and he gets great tones. He's a great ear for, for tones like drums and guitars and... Um, and he also travels to uh, where we where we live, ah. um, and records us. So I live in Nashville, and the band's in Knoxville, like three hours away. And Mark lives in Nashville, with like near near me. So like, I'll just drive home, you know, and I'll visit family and record, and you know, I'll stay over there. It's like a second home to me. So while we're recording in Knoxville, you know, he stays there the whole time, mm. and uh, you know, it helps. Like, you know, we don't feel rushed. Um, it's comfortable because, you know, you're kind of, you're always kind of stressing out in your head when you're recording and writing an album, but, but you don't want your physical world to be stress, stressful too. So it's like, it's easy. It's better that way. And whenever we're done recording in Knoxville, we could, we do other, the other tracks in Nashville. So I could like lay down solos and acoustic guitars and he just lives like down the street from me. So I can just go over to his house and record. So it's just, it's a comfortable situation. Oh, that's exactly what you want, really. You know, you want to yeah. find someone that's almost like an extension of the band, a band member in their own right, thanks to their abilities and the relationships you have. Yeah, he really is. Yeah. So last one then for you, Ben. From what I can see on your website, you have one live date in December. Can we expect a busy 2022 for Whitechapel on the road, provided, of course, things go back to normal? Yeah, we have a couple of stuff booked. Um, for next year like tours but that's just u.s tours we haven't we don't have anything for europe yet you know until you know everything calms down and you know we get the go ahead and you know yeah that's it isn't it hopefully. it's a wait and see you know it was such a wait and see situation still yeah god yeah but we had a uk tour booked like uh you know 2020 but i was looking forward to that mm play like the valley yeah just have to make it bigger when you come back just make it bigger do the valley and, the, and kin in a one big hit yeah that would be amazing i'd love to <laughs> look forward to it ben thank you so much for taking the time to do this i really appreciate it oh uh, anytime man thank you very much for watching you can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on facebook instagram twitter and tumblr Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favor, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?